Well, I wanted to play with building a little circuit here. This is a small, low-powered amplifier, single supply, It'll run off 9 to 12 volts. It's going to be simple. It's not going to be a hi-fi amp or anything. I'd be happy to get two clean watts out of the thing at 12 volts into 4 ohm loads. Hopefully a little bit more, but I'd be happy if I got two watts. So let's take a quick look at the schematic, and this is not complete. It's preliminary. I still have to figure things out, you know, get some bias current set and all that stuff. And, you know, it's a differential type input stage. Our current source is just a resistor. Like I said, this is not going to be fancy or anything. And we come over here to this uh, Class A driver. And this is the biasing here. We'll have a bootstrap circuit. And notice here, we drive directly into the output transistors. There is no driver transistors. Now, as long as I can develop enough current to drive these, we'll be fine. I think I can. I mean, this is a small, low-power amplifier, so don't really need drivers, I don't think. So we'll see how that works out. So I have to look at the gain of these transistors and how much current I can put into the base here. Make sure I have enough gain to get, you know, I'm going to need, uh, I shouldn't need any more than, you know, 1.2 amps of output current. Okay, here's what I have so far. This is not going to be a circuit I'm going to build a case for and make complete. It's just kind of a fun-to-do breadboard project, even though you could finish it off if you wanted. So I build up the, in, the differential input stage, and this is the output stage. Now I'm running a test here. I'm trying to figure out the bias currents. So I have this set up. This output stage set up like this right now. So with some current passing through here, you know, some's going to go into the base and turn those transistors on a little bit. And you notice there's no heat sinks on the outputs yet. So I want to see how much current is going through here. So let me see if I can get my meter on we got there 11 point we'll just say 11.2 millivolts so I'm measuring across this um, resistor right here so you know the current's going to flow through this entire circuit and if I get the voltage across this resistor I can calculate the current okay so I have 11.2 times 10 to the negative 3 because it's 11.2 millivolts and divide that by the resistance 0.22 so we're running at about 51 milliamps now again that's high now that's kind of high but again I don't have heat sinks on these transistors in fact if I touch them it'll drop down to like 20 milliamps or something. I want to be in that neighborhood uh, around 20 milliamps. If you want to run this on batteries, you don't want to have too much biasing current going. Here is the abomination. So far, everything's hooked up and connected. Here's the two differential inputs, the Class A voltage amp, and the output stage, a bunch of components there. I put the uh, Class A transistor right here because I only have to run a couple lines, the negative feedback and the output from that transistor goes over here. And again, I still have to fill out this the schematic before I end the video. 
Now it's time to see if it works. Will this thing actually fire up? Okay, turn on the power supply. Turn it down. Okay, zero voltage. Let me bring that up. I didn't hear any pops or any sound, so it may not be working. The current is pretty low. I don't know. It may not be working. Let me find a piece of wire. Piece of wire, where are you? And I'll connect it to the input. Where's that at? Huh, I can actually hear something. Hmm, it's actually working. Sounds kind of quiet though. Let me check some things and see if I can find any problems. Okay, well, it's the first use of my little preamp I built in the other video. And here we go. Okay, well, it sort of works. It doesn't get very loud and it, it kind of distorts. So this thing has some issues. I'm going to have to start probing around and um, doing some things. You know, the transistors are not getting hot at all. I need to get a heat sink on them for the power test, but they're not getting hot. So we might have a biasing issue maybe, or we're not getting enough voltage into our gain stage. Hmm, well, we're going to have to tinker around here and come back. Okay. Well, it looks good. When I turn it up, It's clipping on the top side. Starts clipping at one point, around 1.2 volts. Well, that's not good. I'm scoping the output of the amplifier. I used 100 hertz because I'm sure you wouldn't want a 1 kilohertz tone blasting in your ear. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking out for you guys. I'm looking out for you. Okay. Well, I could have a problem with this bootstrap circuit right here. I might have something hooked up wrong. It could be just that this circuit doesn't provide enough output current. I don't know if the bottom's working though. The, you know, the bottom side's working. Well, let's see here. I can work back in the amplifier. Where'd my paper go? <laughs> um, metering here. I can meter, see what the output of this transistor is doing. Work my way back in the circuit to find the problem. Okay, so this yellow line here is the output of the driver it connects to the base of the output transistor Put that right there okay I had it in the wrong hole I had to move it over okay catch up focus it's not the output stage look at that it's coming from somewhere ahead of that. 
So let me move back here and see what's going on. Okay, I'm probing at the base of the Class A transistor and uh, it's not a pretty waveform. And it will be inverted since, you know, it's going to be an inverted type stage. Well, I have something to look at now. Something wrong with this circuit here. It needs worked on. Maybe I got a really totally out of range resistor. Like I said, a lot of this is guesswork. Guesstimation, you know, what I think might work, but, you know, may not actually work. So I'm going to have to probe around here and uh, see if I can solve this issue. Okay, I'm getting somewhere now. And you won't believe what I did. I had these three transistors in backwards. What an idiot. Unbelievable. It's amazing I was getting a signal through it. I think the preamp was just pushing a signal through to the output. But all my voltages and everything was just not right. And I was getting a, getting a signal through it. And of course that weird clipping. I thought maybe I had um, something biased wrong and just causing a voltage shift. So I decided, okay, I'll go look at the data sheet of these transistors. And immediately I saw the, uh, the pinout. I had them backwards. You see, I thought it was collector base emitter when it's emitter collector base so I had the base right because it's in the middle so when I f flipped all of these around the amp came alive and was working the way it should so yeah that was the problem okay let's give a listen here Sounds fine. Let's see what kind of power and distortion this thing has. Okay, I have the 8 ohm load. Scope is right at the load there. Let's see what happens here. Well, look at that. clips too early on the top rail and even before clipping let's turn that off even before clipping I'm getting these distortion notches and that's clipping there I mean it's not huge but a little bit too much for what I would like so I need to work on this amplifier more. I think it's current starved. You know, there are no drivers. And, um, yeah, it's current starved. One telltale thing here is to put four ohm loads on it. Oh, wait a minute. I got to turn the, the signal back on. Let's turn it up into clipping again. And put a 4 ohm load. Oh yeah, look at that collapse. Pretty sure that is a current starved amplifier right there. So, uh, yeah. 
I'm going to have to do some more work. Well, I tried some more things. Tried increasing current in different parts of the circuit. The problem is if you increase the current up front in these smaller stages, the small, you know, the smaller transistors, you're going to get more distortion. Also increase current, you know, biasing current down here. I used lower value resistors on the uh, the bootstrap part, increase the current. I was able to get 1.2 watts at 8 ohms with 12 volts, which is not too bad. I mean, a push-pull amplifier that's not bridged into 8 ohm loads with a 12 volt supply, the, the maximum clean power is around uh, 1.5 watts, give or take. So I wasn't too far back, but it, this amplifier just doesn't load well. When you go with 4 ohm loads, the output collapses. So I have not met my objective, so I'm considering this a fail. And this video is getting long. I'm going to end this momentarily um, and continue in a, a second part and look at different output transistors. I might even go with a Darlington type transistor. But I did some uh, checking on these transistors and the problem is the gain is just too low under higher currents. Let's take a quick look at the data sheet. Well these are the BD139 and 140 transistors. I was using them for output because they have enough current for what I'm doing. The problem is is the gain here it can drop pretty low. And in the next video, I'm going to test this to see what it actually is. It shows the minimum here. You know, this is half an amp. And we're looking for one amp. Maybe a little bit more than one amp. So it could be even lower. And they're complementary, and it's the same for the PNP. They are very good driver transistors for audio. I mean, a lot of people like them, and they use them. But for my output stage in my low power amp but they're just not enough they don't have enough current I'd have to use drivers with them and my idea was to keep it simple and just and use a you know a decent circuit with the minimum amount of parts so in the next video I'm going to look at some better transistors the other ones didn't give you a graph, but this here is a um, FJP5200, and it's complement uh, a 1943. These are really nice power transistors. A lot of people in audio uh, design like them and use them in amplifiers. And look at this nice flat gain. You know, it stays flat up into several amps of collector current. And it's starting to drop here, but it doesn't drop off like some transistors. A lot of curves you'll see, they'll, they'll start like this. They'll go up real high, and then they'll drop off. But these are really nice. And look at the difference in temperature, how close the curves are. They're really nice transistors. So at one amp... You know, these are above 100. So I'm going to try these out and see how they work. They should work a lot better. But still, I think we might be short on uh, current in the driving section. So we might still have to use Darlingtons. Well, I'm going to end it here. This is a fail, but we will continue and maybe get something that works. Thanks for watching.